Welcome to the Symmetron webinar today. We'll be looking at 5-axis roughing. My name is Andy and I work at Technical Support. The focus for this video today, the majority of it will be on automatic UCS function inside of roughing. We'll briefly look at the 5x procedures being able to use the previous stock RDN files. Considerations. The purpose is to find the orientation automatically with the maximum volume removal. This considers the cutter, the holder, the stock, and the part to come up with the solution for you. This function is stored under milling orientation. There's three options, as UCS, automatic, and interactive. This is not continuous. It is three plus two milli. It's very easy to program and template with, and it is available in three different procedures, rough spiral, parallel, and volume mill. Some settings to be aware of. Automatic only allows setup UCS for tilt reference, meaning that when it figures these angles, these automatic UCS angles, it is all in reference to however you've set the file up, your NC setup. The maximum tilt angle is a range between 0.1 and 180 degrees. Now, a lot of machines aren't going to be able to go 180 degrees, so this is all dependent on the machine you have and knowing that machine, um, what's going to be a reasonable setting to put in there. Angular resolution. Think about this like tilting away from the Z and going around radially, radially around the axis, incrementing its way down to um, the horizontal plane. The smaller the angle, equals longer calculations. The bigger the angle equals shorter calculations. This can be set between 2 and 90 degrees. And when we talk about calculation, we're talking about the time it takes to calculate the automatic UCS it's going to use, not the actual procedure execution. Minimum volume to mill. This measures volume, so when we enter a, a value for this, we're not referencing surface offset. This is an actual volume amount. If there's not enough volume based on the value entered, no toolpath will be made. Halt rough process on no machining. In case that the previous procedure is identical, and has already stopped calculation due to minimum volume to mill setting, the current procedure will skip its execution and be created empty of motions. This is useful for templating. If you have a handful of these you load in, you don't want it to continue if there's no reason. It just takes up time. So just a setting to be aware of. The last thing that we'll uh, cover today, and we'll do this briefly, is previous stock in 5X Pro and 5x rough. We're going to just look at this real quick because it's new in 2024 and uh, the, the solution is so much easier than what it was before. Instead of bringing a mesh in and out to the file to get it to see the previous stock, all we have to do is hit switch the stock to use and now it will see the previous stock without having to mess around with it. So it's a small setting that has big impact. It's really nice to have. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with this file. And the cutter that we're going to use is this uh, 875 insert cutter. Now we can see this cutter is far too short to be able to machine everywhere on this part and rough it out. Now on the 3-axis, we have the option for multi-cutter, which would allow us to use the same tool and switch between different length ones to achieve this. But as we go down and that tool hangs out farther, we have to slow down, take smaller cuts. It takes longer to machine. It's not as rigid. 
So what we can do with the five axis is change it up a little. So I've already got my NC set up. This is set up the way that I want it. I have my UCS, my reference UCS set up down at the bottom here for cut. And we're going to go ahead and grab a procedure. So I'll start from scratch here. We'll do volume milling. We'll do rough spiral. And we're going to do just a few things. I'm going to leave my surface offset at 20. And we're going to make sure my procedure has the right tool, which it does. And that should load in my settings. And then the last thing we're going to do is pick the uh, surfaces. I'm going to select all. And we're ready to start looking at this. So this is how you would set up a normal three axis procedure. But because we're in five, three plus two machining, what we can do is come to the clearance in UCS area. Now underneath here we have milling orientation and we have three options as UCS, automatic and interactive. As UCS, that's what you're used to. Automatic's what we're looking at. Interactive is the same kind of option other than you actually get a say you're more involved in the process. So we'll do interactive here. And when I do that, there is a suggest direction. When I click on access, it gives me a couple of options here. So new UCS name, I will call this interactive, just so we can tell it apart. And then the tilt. So how far is this tool allowed to lay over from the reference from the ZUCS? I'm going to say it can't go more than 90. Angular resolution is the angle in which it lays down and goes around that axis. So the bigger this number, the faster this solution comes up. The smaller the number, this is going to take an unbelievably long time. We don't want that. So that's between 2 and 90 we have to stick. In this case, I'm going to set it at 45. And then we're going to hit Analyze Direction. So you can see it actually comes up with three options here. And it says, based on these three options, this is the percentage of the volume you're going to hit. So there could be times where you'd want to pick one of the other three, but generally speaking, the one with 100%, that's the most volume we're going to remove. So this would be the one we pick. Now, if I select one of the other arrows, let's pick this 70 here. So we can see that's lined up a little different and I hit green check. We get a new UCS labeled interactive in the procedure. We can see it on the screen and it's labeled up or uh, angled match what we selected. So interactive allows you to do just that, be involved in the process. Now, we don't want that. So let's start one more time. We're gonna go back. We're gonna leave this on cut. This is our original. And then the million orientation, we're going to leave this on automatic. Now, some of those settings we talked about, minimum volume to mill. I'm going to go ahead and it has a default value. I'm just going to put a bigger value in to keep it off. We, I just don't want it even trying to remachine if there's not a lot of stock there. Halt rough process on no machining. It's not going to hurt anything. I'll leave that on. Max tilt angle. So for the machine that I have selected this is going to run in, I know that it can tilt just over 90, but it's not going to be productive to do so. There's no reason the machine past 90 degrees on a block like this, we'd be over-rotating that. So I'm going to lock this at 90. We can still the tilt reference UCS is locked on the setup UCS. The angular resolution we have set to 45. Now, this is where you want to look at what you got on a round part. 45 might be good, maybe 20. But in this case, I know if I came in at full 90 on each of these, it's going to be a better result. But my tool is actually a little too short to reach here. So given it, this angle lets it kind of reach in there a little bit more. I'm going to leave it on 45.
but a lot of times 9090 is a good option. So I'm going to just leave this like it is. Say OK. Make sure I have my surface offset selected. All right, so if we look at the remaining stock here, we kind of zoom in on this. We can see down here on the sides, there's a fair amount of material it wasn't able to reach. So because we have protection on the holder and the spindle, it's protecting us on its way down here and using this shorter tool as far down as it can and then it skips the stock in the areas it just can't fit in. So the beauty of this is all we have to do is say copy, paste. So I'm gonna do this four times here. So we've changed nothing. I'm gonna grab the toolpath, I'm gonna to hit execute. All right, so if we go ahead and look through the results, here's the first one we had. We can see it left some shoulders on there. And as we step down, we can see that this other side, let me move that a little, that got ate up. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the next one. And that side got ate, ate up. So if the angle resolution we put in 45 degrees, it was able to find this side needed removal and this side needed removal. And then when it got to the last solution, it said, hey, there's no reason to calculate based on the input given. So there's still stock here, but based on the 45 increment that I gave it with a max tilt of 90, it said, hey, there's no more here to do. There's nothing worth doing. Now, I could have more of these with a different tool, a smaller cutter to go in, a longer cutter to go in, um, or we can simply change that angle of resolution. So let's do that real quick. I'm just going to edit and delete these. I'm going to edit this first one. And we're going to change this to a full 90. So 90 for max and 90 for the increment of tilt. I'll say save and close. Now here's where I can take a group of these and save as a template. Then all I'll have to do is apply. In this case, it's already here, so I'm going to just say copy paste. And then I'm going to hit mass execute. Now notice the UCS up here, it's still referencing my setup. We'll execute again. Let them all go. All right, so now with the new resolution, we can see the first one looks the same as it did before. Tilt this a little bit. And we get the next side here. Look how much more is removed this time. So it still keeps the tool safe with the motions, but we get a lot bigger bite out of that material that's left. We take out the other side here. We very quickly are able to remove this material without having to do any complex programming. We can get this roughed down very quickly. And this takes seconds to make a template and apply it and get something out of this. So if I wanted to make a template out of this, all I'd have to have is some kind of standardization. I can do it in the procedure. I can do it with sets. So if I have this guy right here, let's edit this. Let's go to geometry. Let's go to part surface select surface by criteria and we're going to go by entity type i'm going to say face and we'd want to filter by more than this on most parts i'm just going to do this real quick i'm going to hit save and close i'm going to delete these i'm going to copy paste Paste. I'm going to go ahead and save this now as a template. Hit save. We'll leave this as automatic UCS rough. That's going to be our template name. I'll green check. Save it in my template folder. So 
let's go ahead and delete this. Let's go to template and apply. And we'll grab this template. Hit OK. We'll grab the toolpath and hit execute and go. So we don't we are not picking anything. And the system is going to figure out how to rough this for us. So it's a really fast way to get some roughing done and get the steel cutting at the machine and not spend all your time programming. And just like that, we have our part roughed down. And you can see after the first top, we've got a nice side tilt here that it figures out machines for us. And then it goes ahead and leans over and it machines the other side for us. So very quickly, we're able to get a templated procedure out of this. And it's also very easy to switch this tooling, have it bring in all our settings for horizontal vertical step, speeds and feeds, all of this can be automated. So very quickly, we can start removing material with the shortest possible tooling, keep things rigid, keep them moving fast um, very easily. All right, the last thing that I wanted to just quick show you guys before we take off is a small change with the use of stock in five axis, full five axis procedures. So in version 16, had we a roughed out a pocket like this, and this is just an example here, guys, but we would have this remaining stock. If we were to try and use the five axis rough or a five axis pro, the toolpath would look like this. It wouldn't know that there was material gone. Now, in version 2024, we program this identical minus one change. Down under stock here, we switch this to use, and we get a very different result. So here's our previous stock again, but this time we get a proper update with the toolpath, and it actually recognizes that that material was gone. And you can see that it doesn't machine all of the area in the middle. So if we do a side view here, we still get our undercut with the machining motions, but we don't get all the extra material motions being removed in the middle. So it can actually recognize that stock and properly update. Now, that's not just in 5-axis rough. That's also going to be in production. Simply switch it to use, and it can see that material when it's appropriate. So just so you guys know that's there, that's a nice option to use. All right, well, that's going to wrap up that presentation today, guys. Remember, the best way to get a hold of us is either via phone, email, or the Connect site. You can make your own login, send us uh, files through a ticket you create. It's a really fast way to get a hold of us. Um, yeah, we'll take some questions now. Thanks.